Hello and welcome to Knit Grit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video we're going to go over how to make these really cute tiny amigurumi spiders for Halloween. I'm actually making a ton of these to hand out with my candy this year for Halloween. We're going to be still doing some socially distanced Halloween so I figured it'd be kind of cute to have something handmade in there. So I'm going to be popping those in there. I think they're super duper cute and I love how they're adorable no matter what color I use them with. All of these are done with Hobby Lobby I Love This Cotton, so if you are looking for this nice, cute, sparkly color, you can get that from Hobby Lobby. I'm pretty sure they still have this one in over there, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm also using some plush yarn to make a plush version. This has a couple differences than the normal pattern, so let me know if you would like to see the plush version as well. There's a couple differences, so if that's something you'd be interested in, just seeing a plush version, then let me know. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. So for this project, you will need, as I've already said, some worsted weight yarn. I'm using this color uh, called Dove, I want to say. It's a gray tone. You can use, obviously, any of these colors. I think this is bright citrus. This one's Dove. This one's black, purple. I believe that one's lavender or something like that. And then this is pewter. I don't remember exactly what all these colors are, but these are all... I love this cotton, and I would definitely recommend a cotton-based uh, size 4 worsted weight yarn. It is super soft and I just really love this cotton. You will also need just a little bit, not a lot, of some polyester fiber fill. I've seen people stuff a lot of these with a lot of crazy stuff, so whatever you have for stuffing, I would use that. You are also going to need some 14s or 15 millimeter safety eyes as well as a 10, 8 to 10 millimeter safety eye. You're going to need two and two of each of those. We are also going to be using a darning needle, which I'm going to pop over here. And then, of course, you're going to need your crochet hook. I'm using a size 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. This is a Furls crochet hook. I have an affiliate with them, so if you're interested in getting a link for that down below for a coupon code, you can go on down there. Otherwise, if you just have a normal Bates or a Boys or whatever you've got, that should work just fine. I just love my ergonomic crochet hook. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So right after I filmed a bunch of my stuff, I ended up getting these in the mail. There are some different safety eyes that are available. I'll have a link down below. It'll be an affiliate link, but I do. I bought these and I think they're really cute. I wanted to try them out. The small ones, actually the little like cappers on the back don't work as well for those, but I ended up having other cappers that did work well. But if you're interested in the bigger eyes, you can get these off Amazon. I thought that would be really fitting for a spider because, well, all the little like dots kind of look like eyes and I think they're super cute. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you're familiar with any of my videos, you know that I tend to uh, start most of my amigurumis with a six single crochet magic ring. You'll know also that my magic ring is a little bit different than what your typical magic ring is. However you want to do it is fine. If you have a normal magic ring method, you're fine to do that. I am going to show you how I do these things, but generally with these terms, magic ring, single crochet one, however you are most comfortable with it, is honestly going to be the best way that you can do it. Uh, I work through the front loop only with my amigurumi, and for this amigurumi, that is actually fairly important because we're going to be going through the back loops in order to pick up and do our clothes off on the tummy or the belly right there. So keep that in mind and I'll show you what I mean by front loop only as soon as I get to that point. So for here, I'm gonna create a decently long tail and we're gonna create a little slip knot. I'm gonna plop that on there right onto our hook like so. I'm also gonna get, you know, in frame. Hopefully I have a tendency to try to go off frame because I'm looking at the crocheting and not at the camera, which, you know, not bad. I try though because it's actually a tutorial and I'm trying to do all that. All right, so for our magic ring, we are going to chain two. If you have your normal magic ring method, that's fine. But I chain two and then I go back into the first chain right here. This is your second chain, this is your first. Put your hook back inside that first chain and I'm going to yarn under, yarn under, and make a single crochet. Now I'm going to replicate that six times. So two, go back inside that same little loop, three, same loop, 
putting six inside of this. So one, two, three, four. You'll notice that your hole is getting wider and wider. That is fine. I think this is six. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's fine. Take your tail and pull it, and that'll bring it all together. So for this, something that I've started doing with my amigurumi is I've started to go through the front loop only, but I keep my tail as if it is a between the front loop and the back loop. This is your front loop, and that is your back loop. It is very windy out and raining, so if you hear that, I apologize. And so for the front loop only, we're just going to go through that front closest to you loop. I'm going to put my tail in the middle of that, and what we're going to do next is we're going to increase all the stitches of row two. So the so all six of these stitches, we're going to put an increase in, and at the end, you should have 12 stitches. So one, it's going to be hard because you're keeping the tail in there, but I keep that in there just to make it so that it's more secure and less likely to fall apart. So go back inside too. You don't have to carry your tail along if you don't want to. I just find that it makes a more secure amigurumi. Keeping the tail in front, putting one in that next stitch, and two. Next stitch wrapped in front still, one, same third little stitch there, two. Every once in a while I kind of tug my tail, not so tight that it'll like warp things, but just enough to make it so that the tail doesn't get kind of puffed up in the stitch, if you know what I mean. So this is our fourth stitch of row two. We're going to put one stitch, go back inside four, and two. Fifth stitch, tail still in the front, one, and two. This is our last stitch. I'm trying to go through the front loop only. Tail still in front. One and two. So here I tug my tail just to make sure that it's not warped inside my stitches and you'll see that it is pretty tight in the center there. Drop your tail in the back and here we are on row three and what we do is we're going to go from 12 stitches up to 18. Until we get to 24 stitches, we are going to be increasing six stitches every single round, essentially. So this round and the next round is what we're going to be doing, another six stitches. So here, in order to do it with the six stitches, you have to evenly distribute it. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet one into the first stitch, and then the next stitch you're going to increase. So single crochet one, increase, single crochet one increase and I'm maintaining going through the front loop only for all of it. One, increase, one, increase, one, increase. That was our fifth repetition. And now our sixth and final repetition, one, and then the next stitch is an increased stitch. So here, if you already have a stitch marker, just move your stitch for marker forward. But what I like to do is take my tail and pull it through. That way, that is our stitch marker, and I can keep track where I am when I start getting more and more stitches. It's easier to keep track of them when you only have six to 12 to 18 stitches going. But as soon as we start getting to 24 and, and higher than that for other amigurumi, it gets a little bit more complicated. So I use my tail as a stitch marker and I never lose them that way because I lose everything. So if it's attached, it's not as likely to get lost. So here, what we're going to do next is we're going to go from 18 stitches up to 24 stitches. And I like to do something called staggering my increases. So when I'm on an even round like this and I have an even number, between our increases, so in this instance it would be single crochet two, and increase. Instead, I like to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one. That way, it will offset your increase and makes it look like uh, a little bit more invisible. So increase, and then single crochet one. So one, increase one. That way, it won't line up with the increase from the previous round and you can't see this kind of hexagonal stripe going through it. It makes it look a little bit more round in my opinion. It's not super duper important if you want to just single crochet two and increase you're also free to do that but I prefer doing it this way. 
So one increase, one. You're going to do that all the way around. If you look, you can see that there are still two stitches between your increases here and here. It just offsets where the increase lies and it's less likely to be seen. So let's go ahead and finish our single crochet one. Increase. And single crochet one. We're going to do that all the way around for three more repetitions for a total of six repetitions. We've already done three. All right, so that was our final increase round. And what we're going to do is we're going to move forward our tail just to keep track. And now for the next three rounds, we're just going to single crochet around and around and around. That gives us the body. So this is where we are essentially on the pattern and we're at the point where we're as wide as we're going to get. And now we need to add a little bit more height to our spider. If you feel like your spider isn't tall enough, you can totally single crochet around for more rounds. But I go around for three rounds and I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have gone around for three rounds. One, two, three. We are now on round eight. And what we're going to do is a little tricky. We're essentially going to be making eight little spider legs that are evenly divided on either side. And the way that we do that is it's going to look really fun funny. I kind of put it in brackets and also in hyphens because we're going to do is a little complicated. So I'm going to try to explain it right here and you'll see what it says right here. See single crochet one at chain five in second chain from hook. You're going to single crochet down the chain essentially. And then you're going to single crochet one. You're going to do that four times, then you're going to single crochet three, and you're going to repeat that twice. So I'll do this step by step right here, but that's essentially what we're going to be doing as soon as I get the fur off of my project, as always. So we're going to single crochet one, and then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. In the second chain from hook, so we're going to skip that fifth chain and go into the fourth. Put it in there we're gonna go one in the next chain two next chain three there's cars going by and it is raining so they are so loud and i'm very sorry and then four what i like to do here is we're going to single crochet one but if i just did it the normal way i'd end up with this big gap here because that kind of likes to open up and gap so the way that i minimize that is i'm going to put my hook originally through the single crochet that we have our chain going over and then i'm going to swoop in and kind of single crochet those two together you don't have to do this step if you want to just go into the next stitch and go like that you can i find that this minimizes the holes in it so we're going to single crochet that one right after it single crochet one chain five go down the chain single crochet essentially there's a single crochet on either side of your leg that is our first leg and then we're going to do that again so one one, two, three, four, five, second chain, like so. Oops. One, two, three, oops, four. Again, I'm going to go through the loop that's right underneath where we just went in and single crochet that into the next stitch it's a little complicated but you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to that way your legs should look like they're about that far apart about two stitches apart now we're going to go again this is our third repetition inside that bracket one two three four five pull our yarn a little bit so i actually have something to work with go down one, two, three, four, go under, single crochet those two together, but to basically just do your single crochet one, and then again, fourth leg, this is the final repetition from inside those brackets, so one, two, three, four, five, Go inside and chain the second chain, 
two, three. Oh, I split right there, so I'm gonna undo that actually and make it so it's not split. There we go, making sure it's not split. Three and four. Now we're still on the celestial repetition, so we're going to single crochet our one inside that. Now we're on the outer part of the brackets, basically. We just did the times four, that is our one, two, three, four legs. So now we're gonna single crochet three. So one, two, three. So we are now halfway through this round. You can tell because we're adjacent from where our tail is here. And we should have 12 stitches left on our work from here to the beginning of our row starts off again. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that repetition again. That's why I said the times two. We're going back to the little uh, brackets on the innermost part, the innermost brackets. And we're going to single crochet one and repeat the legs. Chaining one, two, three, four five go back inside one two three there we go i was trying not to split it and four our legs are four stitches long go inside the underside go inside the next stitch single crochet those together into a one stitch and then single crochet one repeat one Drop our stitch <laughs> and repeat. There we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Go inside there. One. It is noisy today, and I'm sorry about that. Two, three, four. Go inside and single crochet your last on that repetition. Again, one, pull more yarn, one, two, three, four, five, go inside, one, two, oops, two, three, four, together, single crochet one we should have one more repetition of the leg so single crochet one oops and chain one two three four five this is our last repetition for the leg one two oops three and four now we're on the last part where we single crochet our one. That's our last stitch from in the innermost brackets. And now we're going to do one, two, three. And here is where I do something a little bit different. I like how this looks a lot. Create a like six inch long tail. And what we're gonna do is something that I call my seamless uh, stitch off method. Don't worry, we are going to close off and that's why we have all these little back loops from working through the front loop only for the entire time. We're going to, for now, take our tail. We don't really need that anymore. I'm actually just going to cut that off to make it a little bit easier to focus. And since we worked that through our loops, it's not going to fall out or anything. We're going to take our tail and pull it through like that. We're now going to take our darning needle and place our tail on it and what I do is called a seamless kind of uh, fasten off method I have an entire video on it but I am going to show you how I do it here real quick so the point of what I'm about to do is to kind of create a faux stitch over our fasten off point and I like how this looks you can't even tell where I fastened off over here or over here it's right there on this one to give you an idea of what it will look like on your final project you can barely tell where there's any kind of seaming done at all and i really like it all right enough bragging about this technique and time to show you so here we're going to skip the stitch right after our final one so this is our last stitch right here the single the last stitch of our single crochet three we're going to skip 
this stitch here because we're going to create a faux stitch over it essentially and we're going to take our needle and go into the next stitch from the front towards the back like so that creates the first leg over our stitch and that's what creates the stitch look here we're then going to take our darning needle and go through the center of our final stitch and what i like to do is now that we're in the center i like to kind of take my darning needle and go through the centers of all of those uh, back ridges essentially we're going to do that all the way down so i've got all those to go through we're then going to pull that through and that creates a leg i kind of pull my tail until this looks as even as it can with all the other stitches if you pull it too tight or too loose it can kind of warp it and it won't look right but i kind of just tug it until that loop and that loop look on par. I kind of do a little wiggle and that also helps as well. You can then, since it's worked through all those back little ridges there, we're going to take it like that, move our tail away. And now I'm going to go grab my eyes real quick so that I can show you how I add the eyes before we do our little spider belly here and how I close it off. Be right back. All right, so I ended up getting these eyes in the middle of this tutorial, so I want to use them. I think they're super duper cute. And you can tell they're a little bit different than typical ones. They're fairly cheap. I think I only paid like four or five bucks for these, but neither here nor there. I have an entire like collection of safety eyes. I know that might not be something that everybody has. So I actually thought that it might be a good idea to like snap these off and hot glue them on, depending on who is going to get these in your life and whether or not you need them to be safety, safety eyes. If you need them to be safety, safety eyes, I would go to Hobby Lobby and not buy them online because they tend to be a little bit cheaper online. And I mean that both like literally and figuratively, they are a cheaper product and not as safe. I don't, in my opinion, I, I don't think that they are as safe. So, however, I think these are obnoxiously cute and I want to put these um, on this one. So I'm going to use the smallest ends that are not made for these on the middle eyes and then i'm going to be using these ones which i used on uh another project that are from another set of eyes they just work on the little tiny ones so that's what i'm going to be doing so we're going to go and put this on the front of our body this is the back where we just did our little um seamless fasten off essentially but i make the face the front part where it's only three stitches apart you can tell that one is definitely larger than the other i think this one looks a little bit more spidery so that's why i make this one the front what we're gonna do is take this and on the second row right there so that's our leg row and that's the row before that well between our second and third from our single crocheting around i'm gonna put that on there I'm going to try to angle this so that it is kind of to the right as if the light is hitting it from there because that's what those little dots essentially are. And I'm going to put it so it's over this leg. And then I'm going to take this one and put it so it's over the other leg. Doing the same exact thing. Two right there. And then I'm going to kind of angle it before I fast put my little fasten on. You can still kind of move around the eyes depending on all that. But I'm going to put those on as is. Those are super cute. Sometimes it takes me a section to get these on, so I'm going to go pop these on real quick. There we go, that's one. Let's see if I can repeat the same thing again. These take a second, and that's why I use these instead. I'm going to go off camera and get this on. So, there we go. We're then going to take our other eyes, again, trying to get it so that all your dots are lined up. And I'm going to put that right above it and to the left like so kind of over and at an angle so it's kind of 45 degrees up and over right there and doing again the same exact thing on both sides i don't put my uh cappers on until after i am happy with it because see right there there we go it actually split the yarn a little bit so i don't put my cappers on until i'm happy with its location we're gonna move that so that it's going in the direction that i want and not quite that needs to go over i'm gonna put that over here see so you can always take these out and redo them however you need to do them you're not going to do them right always perfectly the first time at least i don't i know i'm not perfect so i'm just showing you how to make a spider <laughs> all right so that is about right yeah i'm gonna be happy with that so now i'm gonna take these ones and add that on and once these are on i think these ones are ones that just kind of snap yep those are ones that are from a higher quality 
safety eyes, so they just kind of snap on. And because it's on the back side, I don't care that they don't match. I really don't. Oh, my nail polish is coming off. Oh, no. That's awkward. All right. Hey! The things we do for our art, it actually peeled it off when I was trying to put it on. Oh, well. There goes my manicure for Amogurumi. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab onto our back links here. I've got these... Usually I just kind of keep them on the inside, but I cut them short so that they are not confusing. We're going to grab our crochet hook and we're going to grab our main yarn or whatever color that you're going to want to go for. And here, we're going to go back to the back side here. We're going to grab our crochet hook and all these little back ridges right here. I like to grab the first back ridge where the seamless fasten off is right over here the first little back loop here, and then I like to go back and go through both of them like so. This way, it becomes seamless, because if you look, right here, it goes over and over and over and over and over and over, and then you'll end up back over here. If you go through both loops, you connect them essentially. I hope that makes sense. And what I'm gonna do to connect it is grab my yarn, and we're gonna do a slip stitch inside of both of those. Grab your yarn, pull that through, chain one, and now you're on. Treat that same double loop right there as your first stitch and we're going to single crochet one, go into the next stitch, two, going through these back loops, three, but we're going to skip that fourth ridge right there and go over it. Usually I would just do, do like a put those two together. It's too hard, so I skip and just go one, and this is our first stitch again. One, two, three, and skip the fourth, one. Some of you may have issues with your eyes. You wanna make sure that your eyes are not over your back loops at all and you can kind of wiggle it around using your darning needle or your crochet hook if you need to pop them up a little bit but generally it shouldn't be too much of an issue so three skip one oops one don't split your yarn two three skip one we're doing this for a total of six repetitions two three skip one oops two three and now you have one more to skip but when you skip it, you're going to be putting your hook, you're going to be dropping your hook off your needle, apparently. Yikes. Let's do that again. So that's a third. I'm going to put my tail on the inside. That way it's just out of the way and not making things a little bit more confusing, quite honestly. So three. There we go. Fixed it. Okay. So now we're going to skip that last back loop only, and I'm going to put my hook through both loops of the first one, kind of tighten it up a little bit just to make it so that this hole in between the stitches is not super pronounced. That is the first stitch of row 10 now. So we're going to single crochet one, and then I'm going to decrease, which I do by putting my hook through both of the front loops, and then single crocheting them together as if they are one stitch. So single crochet one, we're going back to the front loop only. I just like how it looks, so that's why I do it. But at this point, it doesn't super matter if you do the front loop only. I would do it at this point if you've done it front loop only the entire time, just for consistency's sake. But you don't have to. One, two, together. So one. And then two together. One. Two together, one, two together, and I think this is the last repetition, one, 
and two together. Now here, we only have one more row, and then we're all done. But here, I'm going to go grab some stuffing, and I'm going to stuff that real quick, and then show you how I finish off with row 11. All right, so I've stuffed. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. And what we're going to do for row 11 is we are now at the point where we're going to decrease every single stitch. We're going from 12 down to 6. So 1, and I do something different on my last decrease, so if you want to pay attention for that. 2 put those two together, three, four, five, and then our last repetition, which is our sixth repetition, what I like to do is I like to skip and slip stitch off. That decreases us down to six, but also allows me to just slip stitch off, and I think that that looks a lot neater. So you'll say, hey, that's not closed, Cody. That does not look, okay. Really? Okay. There we are. Those are really dull scissors. Holy moly. So you're gonna say that those, that, that that's not closed. You have six remaining stitches. And what I like to do with my amigurumi is take my tail and run it through the final six stitches from the front towards the middle just like that one all six of them two and i go over the top of my st slip stitch three four five six and then i like to go over the top ridge right here oops and then I put my darning needle through the center, through the top, just like that, pull it, and then tug it, and that closes it completely, and you could barely know that that was a seam in any kind of way. I then like to take my little stitch and go through another angle, just another side, try to get all of the stitches off of it, and then I'm going to try to cut it with these scissors again. And bounce the camera for good luck, just, you know, as you do. Like that. And if you find that your little friend, your little tail is peeking through, you can always kind of like wiggle your spider around until it looks like how you want. I love how these turned out. I am handing them out for Halloween, like I said before. These are super duper cute, and I wanted to make sure to get this tutorial out because I'm starting to not feel well. I wanted to make sure I got a Halloween-themed amigurumi out for this Halloween, and it's my favorite holiday. And let me know if you would like to see any future fruit whales or fruit turtles or anything else. I am thinking about doing the plush spider amigurumi i might do it with these eyes because i think that that would be really cute with the bigger ones i think that i could make it work with this big size the other ones i think there's one size larger in the other pack that i have of these so i'm gonna go look at that and try to do that in purple and in gray let me know if that's something that you would like to see let me know if you would like to see brawny the brontosaurus i love how he turned out and his shaping is so cool and could be applied for a lot of other amigurumis if you're interested in brawny let me know if you would like to still see the uh, watermelon turtle or if you would like to see the blueberry turtle the watermelon has little seeds on his belly he's so cute and that's pretty much it i would like to thank you for watching this video and i give a shout out to my patreon supporters if you're interested in going on there for patreon.com slash knit that's our patreon you can see different rewards that we give to our patrons there free patterns and all the like like that uh thank you again for watching be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell before you go if you'd like to see more content like this and until next time, guys, bye and happy Halloween.